And actually, I've dressed today as a modern-day Pharisee. I don't normally dress this way. But I've dressed in the garb of a modern-day Pharisee to illustrate to you what it would mean to obey the Pharisees. You would have to dress according to the traditional Pharisaical dress and follow Pharisaical practices. This is what it would mean to obey the Pharisees. Because I was actually raised as a, as a Pharisee, as a modern Orthodox Jew, before I became a Karite and Old Testament Jew. And actually, the word Karite comes from the Hebrew word kara which is the ancient Hebrew word for the Hebrew Scriptures, or Old Testament, and the variation of that is Mikra, which is still used today in Israel. Kara, or Mikra. And if uh, Kara, meaning Hebrew Scriptures, someone who follows the Hebrew Scriptures is called a Karaite, or a Karaite. Now, as a Karaite, I only believe in the Old Testament. And you probably thought, don't all Jews just believe in the Old Testament? Now, many Jews today actually believe in the Oral Torah, and when I say I'm a Karaite, that means I only believe in the Hebrew Scriptures, the Tanakh, the Kara, the Old Testament, and not in the Oral Torah of, that the Pharisees have invented. I, I uh, was raised as a Pharisee, and one of the things I knew was that to obey the Pharisees would mean to follow rules and regulations that govern every aspect of life, literally from the moment you wake up in the morning until the moment you go to sleep at night. And here's an example of uh, one of these rules and regulations, something that I was taught growing up. I was taught that uh, from the Shulchan Aruch, which is a universally accepted guide to modern Pharisaical living, and there the Pharisees teach that when a person wakes up in the morning, first he must put on his right shoe, but not tie it. Then he must put on his left shoe and tie it, and go back and tie his right shoe. By the way, it gets, it gets even better, because another rabbi came along and added some notes to this book, and he lived in a country where they didn't have shoelaces. And he, literally, he explains, even with our shoes, which do not have laces, a person must still put on his right shoe first. Now, if you were going to obey whatever the Pharisees command you to do, you not only have to dress in this manner, but you have to put on the clothes according to specific rules and regulations. You know, I grew up as a Pharisee, washing my hands before I eat uh, several times a day, two or three times a day. Every time I went to eat a proper meal, I had to go through the Pharisee ritual of washing the hands. And I was raised with this uh, rabbinical practice, and so I knew it wasn't from the Torah. And before I explain to you where it comes from, let me illustrate to you what it actually means to wash the hands. This is a special ritual that the Pharisees practice. The Pharisee ritual of washing the hands begins with a special jug that fulfills certain requirements and specifications. And you take that jug, and by the way, if I take a bar of soap and rub it over my hands and put water on them, I have not fulfilled the ritual of washing my hands. I have to use the jug and do specific ritual. The ritual begins, I pour water over my left hand, then I pour water over my right hand, and then I do this a second time, pour water over my left hand, and pour water over my right hand. And according to some traditions, I do this a third time. I pour water over my left hand, and pour water over my right hand, and I still have not fulfilled the Pharisee ritual of washing the hands, because I have not done the most important part of this ritual. And the key part of this ritual I have not done is the blessing that comes after the actual pouring of the water. And the blessing in Hebrew goes as follows, Which translated into English reads, Blessed art thou, Lord, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanding us to wash the hands. And this is what Pharisees say every time they eat bread, every time they sit down for a proper meal. They wash their hands and make this blessing. And I actually grew up with this blessing, saying this on a daily basis. And at a certain point, I went to my rabbis and I said, we're saying this all the time, several times a day, where are we actually commanded to wash the hands? If we're making this blessing, commanding us to wash the hands, where is that commandment in the Torah? And I'd already by this point started to study Torah. And they explained to me that there's actually nowhere in the Torah are we commanded to wash the hands. However, the rabbis have uh, made what's called a rabbinical enactment. The rabbis, according to the rabbis, have the authority to make enactments that add new laws to the Torah, add new laws that the people must follow. And these rabbinical enactments, these are called in Hebrew by the Hebrew word takanot. Takanot refers to these rabbinical enactments. That's really a very important concept, takanot. So these takanot are these rabbinical enactments, and the classic example of one of the takanot is the commandment of the rabbis to wash the hands. Well, I asked my rabbi, okay, the rabbis made this enactment to wash the hands. Uh, why are we blessing God for commanding us to do that? And my rabbis explained to me that God has given the rabbis the authority to make these enactments, and by obeying the rabbis, you're indirectly obeying God. Now, I asked, where, where are we... Where did the rabbis given the authority to make these enactments? And they said, oh, stop asking so many questions. 
Pharisees comes from the Hebrew word pirushim, which means the separated ones. At the time of the second temple, they were separated off from the mass of the nation. Later on, after the destruction of the temple, they began to take over more and more Jewish institutions. And today they're known, in the modern name is the Orthodox rabbis or Orthodox Jews. Now, this is something that Orthodox rabbis actually proclaim very proudly, that they're a direct continuation of the Pharisees of Second Temple, Second Temple times. And in fact, in order to be called rabbi, an Orthodox rabbi, a person must have rabbinical ordination from a previous rabbi, and that rabbi from a previous rabbi going back in an unbroken chain all the way back to the Pharisees of the first century. So the rabbis of today are literally a direct continuation, one rabbi to the next, from the Pharisees of the first century. And Phariseeism, ancient Phariseeism, and modern Orthodox Judaism are both founded upon five fundamental principles, five fundamental principles of Phariseeism, which I lovingly call the five iniquities of the Pharisees. Uh, and, and the first principle is the concept of the two Torahs, the written Torah and the oral Torah. Then we have the authority of the rabbis, the absolute authority of the rabbis to interpret Scripture. God has no say in it, only the rabbis do. Irrational or midrashic interpretation, Scripture is a divine code, and things can be taken out of context. Uh, sanctified tradition, such as the kippah, and the takanot, or commandments of men, such as the washing of the hands. Now, it was very interesting. I was giving this talk uh, about a week ago, and afterwards a woman walked up to me and she said, Nehemiah, when you were talking about the five principles of Phariseeism, you didn't really mean the Pharisees. You really meant my denomination of Christianity, right? And I said to her, you know, I mean, I'm talking about what I, what I know from my first-hand experience. I don't really know anything about your denomination of Christianity, but if the shoe fits... Just make sure to put on the right shoe first. Uh, don't tie it. 